Hello all, my name is Prash Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, uh, the talk of the town recently is all about generative AI, agentic AI applications. They're talking about building AI agents which are able to automate some complex workflows. And when we talk about all these specific applications, the core important thing is that how we take this specific application into production, right? And that is where this topic that I'm actually going to discuss in this particular video is all about LLMOps project lifecycle. Now, the importance of making this video is very simple, guys. We really need to follow the trend that is happening in the industries, what the industry demands, what is the kind of requirements. And once we are following that trend, trust me, getting jobs, getting consultancy work is very, very simple, right? So considering this, in this specific video, I'm going to talk about the entire LLMOps project lifecycle. Uh, each and every steps, what are there in this project lifecycle, we will discuss what all tools you can use, what all frameworks you can actually use. That also I'll be talking about. Now, one very important thing is that for people who already know about MLOps, who already know about LLMOps, understanding about LLMOps is very very easy because the tools may be same there may be some more added features for different kind of llm models itself right which will be able to perform or which will be able to evaluate those llm models so if you already know mlops right and many of my students who are following my youtube channel who's following my udemy who's following my live courses i think you all should know that i've already covered everything with respect to MLOps. And my next step is basically to cover everything related to LMOps, right? So considering this, if you know MLOps, making a transition and learning about LMOps becomes very, very easy, okay? Now let's go ahead and talk about step-by-step step each and every important, uh, you know, the life cycle itself, uh, which involves LLMOps. Whenever I talk about LLMs, uh, LLMOps, sorry, it has two important things. One is LLM plus other one is ops, right? So if I also talk about ML ops, it is nothing but ML plus ops, right? So this is nothing but machine learning operations. This is nothing but LLM operations. In this kind of projects, we specifically use LLM models, okay? It can be in the form of APIs. It can be in the form of fine tuning. It can be in the form of creating agents, right? We may be creating AI agents using this. And whenever LLM's model is included, we definitely need to follow some kind of best practices, right? So considering this project lifecycle, it is very simple. The first is planning and requirements. Obviously here, if I talk about the, um, you know, product owner, right? The product owner will definitely be here, right? So here you will be having a product owner. You'll be having your business analyst who will be taking care of this requirements gathering and each and everything, right? When we talk about data collection and gathering, again, a data scientist, a AI engineer, a data analyst will be probably involved in this. And the main aim is that based on the use case, what kind of use cases you are specifically solving, we will try to collect the data. Now, with uh, whenever we use LLM models, what are the common use cases that we use, okay? One common use case is nothing but a simple generative AI application, okay? generative AI applications, right? It is a chatbot where you have LLM integrated and you are able to build something. Second, agentic AI applications, agentic AI applications. Let's say you want to go ahead and create your own AI agent. Third, you may want to create your own AI agent, right? Which will be able to perform the specific task. Fourth, if I talk about this, you know, one of the most important is RAG applications. RAG applications, you have a vector databases, you have something, you have some documents, each and everything. So in all these things, you know, we are talking about some complex workflow, which it is able to automate, right? application wise, one of the most popular is chatbots. We can create chatbots in this, right? So RAG application, I feel it is the most important thing, right? And based on this RAG applications here, okay, one more project may be that you are also trying to implement fine tuning. Fine tuning of models for this particular chatbot, each and everything can be included. So these are some of the common use cases that I've seen in the market where people focus on or companies focus on building, right? 
So when we talk about data collection and preparation, this data collection and preparation may be hap happening for fine tuning projects here. Specifically, we can use this for fine tuning projects or we can also use it for a RAG application because we'll definitely require some data to be put up in the vector database itself, right? So for this two purposes, we actually do that, right? Fine tuning means retraining the entire LLM model or fine tuning the LLM models. RAG application basically means, hey, we are going to convert whatever data we have actually collected into, uh, we are going to store that into the vector database in the form of vectors. Third is all about model selection. <clears throat> Model selection basically means LLM model. What LLM model we are using, right? What LLM models we are specifically using. Now in this, there are two important things. Now one is that you can definitely try multiple models. You can try OpenAI models. You can try Anthropic models. You can try Google Gemini models. You can try any kind of models itself. But on top of that, you'll also see that, hey, do we need, do we have some dependency on other frameworks where we can also integrate tools, some external third party tools, right? Here, when we talk about tools, we are either integrating with a database, we are integrating with, let's say, web search tools, we are integrating with some other tools that is available out there. Okay, MCP is also one of the option, right? So we will definitely go ahead and probably also explore these two things, right? And obviously, the other metrics, which is the best model, how to choose the best model, what is the architectural design, size consideration, each and everything information will be available when you're using this kind of LLM models, right? And you can easily get that information directly from the hugging face also, okay? Then once we select the model, once we know what our data is, you know, one of the tasks is that we may either create a chatbot and that chatbot should work like how my company wants. So for that, we will specifically do fine tuning, okay? If you don't want to go ahead with fine tuning, you can also go ahead and do RAG. And there is also a concept of fine tuning with RAG, okay? Fine tuning with RAG, I think we, we say it as raft or something. RAG with fine tuning. I just need to probably go ahead and check this out. Okay. Here, what we are doing, we are performing hyperparameter tuning. We create a training pipeline. We also do experiment ranking. For RAG, we focus on creating a DDB, vector database. Inside this DB, we go ahead and put up all the information in the form of vector embeddings. And you know that when we are specifically creating RAG, we need to follow some kind of cycle from data ingestion, data ingestion, then what we do after doing data ingestion, we do data parsing. We do data parsing. And from data parsing, what we specifically focus on, we can also go ahead and write document splitter. Because when we say data parsing, we're converting that data into a document structure. And then we divide that into chunks. Right? After these chunks, we convert this into vectors. And then we finally store it into a vector DB. Right? So this is basically your data ingestion and parsing pipeline in a RAG application, okay? So this also we need to do. And then from this vector DB, we basically create a retriever. So if you are following my playlist, I think you should understand all these things, right? So at the end of the day, we are performing fine tuning or we are creating RAGs, you know, we are doing this. And then you have evaluation and testing. Here, evaluation and testing are basically done on our applications whatever applications we are specifically building. If we are building a RAG application, so for that we have different evaluation and metrics. For simple LLM models, we have different evaluation metrics, right? Evaluation metrics. So both these metrics can be applied. But the question is that, what are the tools we can specifically use over here? So some of the tools I will say, you can use MLflow, which is completely open source. You can use Langsmith, right? So that is the reason this Lang chain, Lang graph are very, very popular because they provide the entire ecosystem. Okay, Lang graph. So, <clears throat> and if you have seen my playlist, you know, with respect to this Lang chain, Lang graph and all, I've already created evaluation and testing metrics also. No, I've not created it. I think I've shown you monitoring and debugging. So here we can also do monitoring and debugging. And then I will also go ahead and create a evaluation test metrics. There are some seven to eight parameters which we specifically used. So here we use performance metrics, A-B testing, bias detection and all, right? Then after doing the evaluation and testing, we get some kind of score, right? For a RAG applications, there is a different one. For simple LLM models, there is a separate one and all, right? Then what we do is that we focus on prompt engineering, right? So prompt engineering is one where we try to 
use different different prompts to just see that how my output is basically coming up and we basically play with this particular prompt they are like three to four different kind of prompts which is specifically right unless and until we are not satisfied so here it's like just like a uh, we continuously keep on improving the prompt unless and until we get the right output finally deployment again deployment here is all about infrastructure setup api endpoint scaling strategies and all right so here uh, we specifically use on AWS or Azure or whatever cloud you are specifically using. How we can take this application into production, how we can create an API and obviously one important thing is how do we optimize the API call cost, right? So because LLM models call, API calls will be happening. Let's say there is a company whose requirement is that we need to go ahead and deploy in their own cloud the fine-tuned LLM model. Then how we should probably go ahead and understand that particular part also happens in the deployment. And finally, when we talk about monitoring and maintenance, this is what we basically use over here. And I said, here you can use multiple tools. There is like Langchain, there is Crew AI, right? There is Crew AI. There is different, different frameworks like Llama Index and all, right? This frameworks, see, one thing is that, one very important thing that to build any kind of LLM projects, you need to focus on frameworks, right? Frameworks can be OpenAI frameworks. It can be Langchain. It can be Langgraph. It can be Crew AI. It can be Autogen, right? So whatever you're comfortable with, you know, let's say it, it depends completely on the problem statement what you're specifically focusing on. Second is, let's say if I want to probably go ahead and do monitoring, debugging, right? Let's say I want to just go ahead and do monitoring, debugging, right? then what tools I will be using. Again, you have to research multiple tools. One of the tools that I specifically work on are MLflow because it is open source. Then I also have used Langsmith. So both of them I have used. Both works in a must amazing way, right? So here uh, in the Langsmith, we also have something called as Langgraph Studio, right? So for Agentic AI application, this is a, probably the best studio. In Autogen also, you have something called as Autogen Studio, right? So through that, you will be able to debug your application each and everything. Cloud platform, if I talk about cloud platform, cloud platform, AWS, Azure, GCP. I think these three are very, very good. For monitoring, debugging and all right, we can also go ahead and use Langgraph Cloud. Langgraph Cloud. And right now, many companies are also coming up that like framework companies are also coming up with their own cloud platform for doing the deployment. So you can also try that. But many people prefer AWS, Azure, GCP because they already have that kind of platform with them. You know, internally these frameworks also will be using either one of this particular cloud platform also. But let's say that you want to probably go ahead and deploy your own cloud in your uh, your own application in the cloud platform because of data privacy and all. So you can probably go ahead and use this. Okay. Fourth important thing, right, when we talk about is uh, evaluation testing, okay? So for evaluation testing also, you have the same libraries like MLflow, Langsmith, okay? <clears throat> Langsmith. You can basically use MLflow because MLflow is really, really good. So this basically talks about the entire LM of project lifecycle. The main aim is that how do you build an end-to-end project that involves LLMs. It can be Agentic AI, it can be RAG, it can be anything. How do you follow this entire process and take it into the production and how do you monitor this? Again, tool infrastructure, when we talk about version control, we also have to do model versioning, data versioning, code tracking. And for this, you know, we use GitHub, you can use GitLab, we use CI CD pipeline, right? Then MLOps tools, we use MLflow, Kubeflow, DVC. DVC is nothing but data version control. Then you have computer uh, resources, GPU cluster, cloud platform, edge devices. Let's say if you're probably going to take it into an edge device. Observability basically means logging, metrics, alerting, right? So this will also be available there. In MLflow, you have this entire feature, okay, of observability, even in Langsmith. Then cost management, obviously this, we do it in the cloud and security and compliance is also we do it in the cloud, right? So. This is what is the overall structure of the LLM Ops project life cycle. Okay. See, at the end of the day, uh, I definitely need to teach you each and everything. And that is what is my plan, right? But if anybody is interested to join our LLM Ops batch, you can go ahead and 
go to krishnag.in and we are coming up with this LLM Ops industry ready projects where we discuss about all the specific things. You can go ahead and check it out. Okay. So yeah, uh, this was it from my side. I hope you like this particular video. I will see you in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one all. Take care. Bye-bye.